Hey guys, welcome back to another AT Customs video and today I'll show you the lazy way of masking your kit. If this is your first time painting your kit, you could actually follow this way. Of course, this is a very very lazy way. So if you are a very uh, professional Gunpla modeler, maybe you shouldn't actually watch this video. But if you are uh, new to this uh, Gunpla hobby and you really really wish to paint your kits and you feel that it's very very troublesome to actually paint a kit then you could actually continue watching this video and today uh, this is actually the kit that I'll be working on which is the Gundam Nadale uh, it's a high grade so as you can see the original artwork is actually pretty pale the color are mostly white and it has a lot of stickers so usually why do we paint the kit is actually so that we don't have to use the stickers as the stickers will actually peel up uh, peel off after maybe let's say one one month time or actually one week time so usually the stickers are a very very bad thing and most of the time people will just take the stickers and throw them away however uh, the stickers sub has all of this type of uh, camera type of uh, glossy or chrome green which is actually okay to use it even though on a painted kit so usually don't throw this too okay and for this video I'm actually going to use the stickers here to as a masking on the kit so basically how do you do that okay before actually I start painting I will also let you guys know that actually most beginners will paint with this kind of paint which is spray spray can um, spray can is actually good in some cases but especially kits like this a high grade or actually if you are building an SD for example the kit is actually pretty small so the paint on the spray can is a bit too thick so I would definitely suggest you getting an airbrush and actually airbrush you save more money compared to a spray can I will actually make a follow-up video uh, on spraying with a spray can like this or using an airbrush why actually airbrush saves you more money so this is going to be a follow-up video um, I'll do it in the future but for now I'll just talk about the masking all right well of course if you ever built a Gundam before you can actually see guides like this where where the stickers are supposed to go uh, some is on the chest here and the legs here and some also on top of the shoulders over here so just follow back the stickers and paint it and put it on the kit but before you actually put those stickers you should actually paint the kit first and if you want to know what kind of color you should paint the kit well follow back the colors on the stickers so example the red for the shield you should paint the red first and then this um, blue thingy here for all those uh, small parts so you could actually paint red and then blue and then gray on the kit first so I will show you um, I will skip forward and I will show you once the kit is painted the first layer okay okay so this is going to be the part two for the painting process um, as you can see it's good to actually separate all the parts here um, this is going to be the red part this is going to be the blue part uh, including this because these are uh, supposed to be blue uh, which is supposed to be the same color as the side here and the um, here uh, the ties here and then this is supposed to be the gray parts uh, for example up here supposed to be gray a lot of these small pieces here are supposed to be gray um, and then also as you can see here this part down here is supposed to be blue okay this part here is supposed to be blue but then uh, I just put it to the gray because the gray is actually more uh, important in this case but I will actually separate paint it later okay and then this is actually I will use it as a gunmetal gray color and this is white white is usually the last part that we will paint so because why I actually put this as a last part is because once I paint all of this and mask it off I will have to paint white on top so later all of this part here will go actually go to the white so white is actually best to leave it the last 
but there is one issue here uh, why actually I put this with the yellow is because that this is the problem part and as you can see this part here there is this line inside here which is, which is supposed to be green and then this part here is supposed to be grey so this um, none of this part is actually included in the stickers so I need to manually paint this part so most of your, the kids out there you don't really have much of a problem part like this but this I will actually do it out from the camera I won't show the process of this part but just let you guys know and yellow is usually the part that I usually um, use gold color for this part okay okay guys so we are back again and I've done painting as you can see there is a blue the red and the gray so um, as you can see the blue is actually um, I use the color of a uh, silver mixed with uh, the blue so that the blue is not too dark it's slightly glossy okay and also I didn't prime my kit uh, as you can see this white is still the original color so basically painting uh, is not really necessary for you to use primer but of course primer will give you a better result uh, as for this demonstration I don't paint with any primer um, just for the sake of showing for beginners because uh, I, I feel that beginners don't really need to prime their kit unless they are going for like competition level okay and for the next part I'm doing the masking and as you can see what I'm doing is basically using the stickers that is provided by Bandai to do the masking and why actually I use this method is because that um, the cutout for the stickers are actually pretty accurate to the kit if you do masking or by using masking tape manually it's a very very tedious job um, especially when there are parts with plenty of curves and um, I think most beginners will actually got turned off by painting their kit is mainly because of masking and so and this uh, I mean most of these uh, stickers usually we just throw them away uh, so I think it's better to get uh, make good use of them before you throw them away um, and also you can see from the video I actually stick the stickers to my hand this is mainly to making uh, make the stickers less sticky um, so that the paint won't peel off when I peel the sticker out of course instead of hand you can actually um, stick it to your pants or shirt to make it slightly um, not too sticky alright so as you can see from the video I'm laying down perfectly like um, how to say usually you lay down the stickers okay so now I'm gonna speed up uh, the video until I go on to the next step Okay guys, so as you can see, I've done all of my masking over here, right, the top of the head, the shield, okay, the side of the legs, here, okay, as for this, I just paint the whole thing red, uh, for the chin, okay, and then the head, I just use the stickers, um, because I don't find a point of painting this, so I just use the stickers, so this is constantly done, okay, and yeah for this i use my normal masking tape so this is actually the normal masking way if you were to mask a part uh, but because this whole part there is no stickers okay so you got the point everything i use stickers so as you can see most of the stickers are already used except for these parts that goes under the clear part and this camera part so this thing I will use it once I've finished painting the whole kit. Okay, so jump on to the next one. 
Okay guys, so as you can see, these are some of the parts that I've already painted and I'm going to start removing the um, masking or what I say, the decals so as you can see, the shoulder, once I remove the decals it's very very nice see, it's perfect cut so I would strongly recommend using this way to mask your kids especially if you're a beginner Okay, as you can see, it's really really precise. It's actually way better than manual masking. Okay, and I will go ahead and finish all of this and I'll show you the end results. Okay, so this is the head. Hopefully everything goes well. I have not painted the yellow yet, so I'll do the full head later. Okay. And look at it. Instead of a red, I mean the glossy red, it's going to be this maroon color. What do you guys think? Right? It looks very very nice. And the final part that I'm afraid of most is actually the shield. Um, because there is actually a lot of gaps around the stickers. And me being me, I actually didn't really see it properly when I paint. So I'm afraid that some of the paint might get through it. So I might have to touch up it later. But I'm going to open up and show you guys the end result. Okay? Okay, it does look good. There's no paint going in there, and I feel that it looks pretty good, right? What do you guys think? Masking is close to perfect. So do you look at that? The glossy blue and the grey. It looks just very very good. And of course the stickers here I'll do it later. Okay. Alright, and actually there's one more thing that I have to show you guys is that the stickers, if you remember previously, it is actually a um, dark green color, uh, but I actually painted chrome. Okay, I've painted chrome so that when I Put the sticker uh, and then the clear piece on top i'll put the clear piece uh clear green so if i put the clear green above the chrome part it will look shiny uh, compared to the dark green that is provided by bandai okay and i also done this part um this is actually the camera as you can see there's a camera cut out here uh, the camera i've actually paint um chrome over it and then i put a little bit of clear green so it has this like a glossy green effect okay so I guess you guys can try this method also next time uh, if let's say the color of the stickers that they provide is not up to your liking you can actually customize it this way okay so this is how the kit looks like when it's completed 
and now I will actually proceed in inserting the stickers onto those uh, parts uh, of course I'm using the hobby knife to actually removing the stickers and place it in those very tight places of course be extremely careful when you put it so that you don't scratch the paint and as you can see I'm using a q-tip to actually push the stickers in be very very soft and gentle uh, by, uh, when doing this because I you didn't want to scratch the paint off from the stickers as uh, the paint does not really stick onto the sticker really that well okay and now I proceed putting in the clear green and you can see the results when it's done and then again I'm using the q-tip to actually push it in so that I didn't scratch uh, the clear green okay so as you can see it's a very very shiny green which looks perfectly to this uh, Gundam Okay, so for the next part, I'll be working on the head and as usual, you still repeat the same process and make sure that you put the stickers on the correct side or else it will be very very hard to actually remove the sticker and uh, without damaging the paint. And actually one more tip that I could give is that while painting the green clear part, you can actually paint uh, un at the underside of the clear uh, clear piece so that when you insert uh, the clear piece onto your part the risk of actually scratching off the clear green is actually very very less okay Alright, then for the most final part, we are going to put on the camera which is on the top of the Gundam head. So, of course, just put it in like a normal sticker will do. And be very, very careful as usual. guys thank you so much for watching see you guys again next time good day guys so i'm going to put this gunpla into my car and i have no idea how long will it last but i'm going to experiment this and as we know most of our gunpla fans we will actually like to display our kids in the car but then you know we are afraid of the weather and how long will it last so as for this is a painted build so i'm actually assuming it should last longer of course i'm going to make a follow-up video of this of how do you put gunpla in the car